Just sort of start with your name and where you're from. Uh, ben from uh, North Lakes. Uh, we actually have the Jim's Mowing uh, Kipper Ring region. Uh, yeah, we're... Uh, yeah. Yeah. And what were you doing prior to Jim's Mowing? Uh, I'd actually uh, worked my way up through pipeline industry up to national sales manager. Uh, we basically got sick of the corporate world and business has been sold and bought and managing all the teams. So got a young family, decided that the Jim's network would be a better option for us and uh, basically give us some flexibility so that we can do our own thing. And basically, uh, well, part of it was that we didn't want to be capped and tied into any particulars. So, yeah. And why Jim's mowing? Uh, oh, basically, I just heard all the stories about it. Um, we originally looked at a fencing franchise back when we were in Victoria still. Um, and we moved up there and I've got family friends that use gyms and they'd all spoken about how their service is great and that uh, they'd been able to get a large business up and running and that. And uh, we yeah thought we'd, why not? I've always been an outdoor guy. I've been uh, regional Vic most of my life. So wasn't anything for me to jump into it. I'd never done it as a business, but always been, you know, out on the weekends playing around with equipment and yeah, yeah. So how are you finding the heat? Going from I'm from Regional Victoria myself. I'm from Warrnambool. So how are you find the how are you going? How are you find the heat up in Brisbane? Uh, it was only about three or four weeks where the humidity really got us. But uh, most of the, I've got employees as well, and they're from that area, and they still struggled. So um, it's it's actually not too bad in that south corner of Queensland there. Uh, I don't know that I'd cope if I went further north, but yeah, it's um, it's not too bad. It's sort of like spring days most of the time, so yep. we don't get the same crazy 40 degree heat that you get down here. So yeah. And how how was the training experience? So you were in a corporate world for a long time. You did like outdoors, but how did you find the transition from what you were doing into the mowing business? Uh, yeah, it was good. Um, more so for the networking with everybody there. Like I met uh, a couple of guys that had been doing the gym thing for a while because they weren't able to get down through COVID, so they had come down and uh, so then you've met those guys, met a couple of new guys. I think there's probably five or six of them that I'm still in touch with from their training and uh, we help each other out. We, you know, get in and uh, get a few bigger jobs done or you've got a question, you can bounce off someone. Um, we've got uh, like a manager franchisor that's helped stand out in our region and if I've got any out of the park questions that I've got no idea about, you know, that, that whole part of it all came from the training. Um, the, the training itself for me was sort of on a more basic level because I've been running big businesses in, in that corporate world anyway. Um, but yeah, the, definitely the networking and meeting the guys and even some of the suppliers and that sort of thing so you could get into it quickly. So. And how was your first week when you when you went up and started your business, you're ready to go? It can be very daunting. I love asking this question to a lot of people. So how was your first week being in your own business? Uh, terrifying. <laughs> um, I'd had like side hustle businesses prior to that. So the business side was okay, but I'd left a fairly decent salary. Um, I made like 450 bucks in the first day and then the second week I only made 450 bucks for the whole week. So there was a bit of a, oh no, what have I done? But um, I harassed Dan, got into it and uh, just started chasing leads down and the work happened just sort of overnight. We went from not being able to pay the bills in one week to three or four grand in the full the second full week sort of thing so yeah it just went it just was like a switch just went from nothing to flat out so well, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that because we we sometimes we sell it's all you know jumping in from day one it's easy roses but you had a little bit of a challenge there at the start oh, so yeah, the, the yeah. first couple of weeks were well first probably full seven to ten days was terrifying um but yeah i've got the right mindset i suppose and just and okay i've, I've got to work out how to get this thing up and running as quick as possible and um we went from just taking the leads sort of thing to okay how can we be proactive about it and as soon as we did that driving around that the trailer the amount of people that just walk up to you you might be doing a little mowing job and then the uh, lady across the road comes in down wants a palm tree cut down or hedge trimmed up and uh, yeah the, the branding's just crazy so and, and how's the support been from you know you're nine months into your journey already but how's your support been and from Dan your franchise also how's that been yeah, pretty good. Um, if we can't get hold of Dan, there's always uh, other guys in the network. Like, um, obviously, he's pretty busy at the moment, so they uh, putting the managers on in the different regions help. So, uh, and then I, I suppose the other franchisees uh, have always been helpful for us. So that support there is probably better than anything. Uh, worth the fees alone. So.
And, and you're happy with the income where you are at the moment? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we're, we're doing pretty well. Um, obviously, outland a lot of money growing a business pretty quick, so there's not a lot left all the time. But uh, you know, we've gone from one man crew, one trailer, working from home to we had to get a warehouse. Uh, we've got two trailers. We've got a spare landscaping trailer. Had to get a second vehicle. Uh, so you've gone pretty aggressively in that nine months. Yeah, yeah. We've um, we've got two full time employees now. Uh, casual and my wife uh, comes out on the tools and helps or chases leads down when I'm too busy for it. And yeah, it's um, it's been chaos when you start sitting there <laughs> looking yeah, yeah. at what it was. So ha has it met your expectations as a business or exceeded them? I uh, definitely exceeded them. I, I spoke to. Uh, a couple of franchisees prior to starting um, and they'd all sort of given me an idea that yeah okay I can make a living out of this thing and that it, for me it was as long as I can pay my bills um, and still sort of maintain that salary then uh, I was going to be happy but um, I can't say I ever thought we'd have full-time employees, multiple vehicles, multiple trailers and, uh, and scaling as quick as we are. And how's your lifestyle like now compared to your corporate job? Uh, I'm at home every night um, instead of flying around the country. Uh, it, it's probably I probably work more. Um, that's my yeah my fault <laughs> more than anything. Uh, I have a bit of a, a problem with trying to work too much. So the are you, are you working for you? So, so. Yeah, well that that's a good thing. It, um, if you don't want to, you can. Like this weekend, we we come down to Melbourne. We just not you know pull the pin at lunchtime yesterday. Head off and away we go. So. Um, couldn't really do that easily when you're working for somebody else and uh, especially over winter with you know yep. just looking if we want to go on holidays we can take a week off the boys and run the, the trailer and we just don't do any landscaping works or anything in that time frame so yeah the flexibility there is good so and what's your best bit of advice for a new franchise because I love hearing about that you had a bit of a not the best start so it's a it's it's a reality of a business it's not going to be as easy from day one sometimes so maybe just talk about what's your best bit of advice for a new person or someone looking to get into being a jim's mowing franchisee uh lean on the guys around you there's um i had a couple of guys uh like i was able to call dan uh jeff robbins he'll love me saying this but uh, he was uh yeah he, he actually owns the territory that i live in um so i was able to go and do a few jobs for him and then that sort of helped me build up while I was trying to get everything up and running. And so if, if you're struggling for work, um, talk to the guys that are in your local area. Um, they may have work for you. They might have pointers on what's worked for them around there. Uh, yeah, so like even, even the other day, um, my brother's actually looking at buying a Sunshine Coast region. Uh, and we ran into a franchisee that had been three weeks in, I think. and. He'd, uh, he was just trying to bounce ideas. Obviously, he had a job he couldn't do, uh, a tree pruning job. He wasn't set up to do it. We just happened to be driving past. So, well, the window down, said hello to him, and he goes, "Oh, you can come look at this for me." So, by us doing the tree pruning job, that kept his customer happy. So he was able to do the other little bits and pieces around there, and um, and we we're able to give him a bit of advice. And yeah, it's um, the, just lean on the guys. They're, that's the whole benefit of it. The gym, that Jim's network, the other franchisees. So. Awesome. Well, thank you for talking to us and thank you for very much for actually coming down to uh, Victoria to the trade day. We appreciate it. Hopefully, you put yourself in some prize jewels and get a prize. But um, we appreciate your time and glad to hear you doing so well in your business. So, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for doing that. Appreciate it. Where are you from, Regional Vic? Uh, New Shepherd and Regional. Oh, okay, right. Yeah.